All right, everyone. Happy Tuesday. This is Brittany uh, with the ALS Association. Uh, we're excited to have you join us today. Uh, today's webinar is going to be focused on integrated respiratory care with Voxin. Please note um, that this webinar is being recorded and will be saved on our uh, website afterwards for viewing um, at, as needed afterwards. Please note that out of the courtesy of others, we're asking everyone to mute their lines. Um, as a double measure, all lines will also be muted on this webinar. If you have any questions throughout the webinar, please feel free to include them in the chat box. We're going to have time at the end of the webinar to do uh, question and answers at the very end. Today's webinar is being presented by Vent Tech Life Systems. Um, we have Chris Brooks, who's the managing partner um, at Vent Tech Life with us today. Um, so just hang tight and we're going to get started shortly. All right, today's webinar, like I mentioned, will be presented by Chris Brooks, who's the managing partner of Ventec Life Systems. You'll also be hearing today from Dr. Lou Living, who's the founding board member of the Oregon and Southwest ALS chapter, along with um, Pat Quinn's uh, father, who's speaking on behalf of Pat Quinn. Um, please note that um, our mission at the ALS Association is to discover treatments and a cure for ALS to serve, to advocate, and empower people affected by ALS to live their life to the fullest. Please note that the ALS Association has no financial stake in any devices, medication uh, discussed today, nor do we endorse any particular treatment. We always advise uh, for any specific medical advice to contact your clinician. With that said, I will now turn it over to Chris Brooks uh, to kick us off on our webinar. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Brittany, and good afternoon, everyone. Really appreciate you taking the time to join us, and we're excited to share a little bit of information about Voxin. I'm going to go ahead and advance this slide here. Okay, that should be working. Um, really excited to uh, speak to you to a little bit about integrated respiratory care with Voxin, particularly as it relates to people living with ALS and their caregivers. Excited to be joined by two special guests, as Brittany mentioned. Uh, both Dr. Libby, uh, who is on the National ALS Board and a founding member of the Portland Clinic in Oregon, and Pat Quinn Sr., who is Pat Quinn's father, who will be able to speak uh, from the perspective of a caregiver of a person living with ALS and using Voxin and how uh, that's had an impact on his life. So we'll go ahead and dive into the content. Uh, if you do have any questions, please use the chat box throughout to ask your question. We will make sure to save time at the end of the webinar to review your questions and answer your questions and get through as many of those as possible uh, in the time that we have here. So first of all, what is Ventec Life Systems? As Brittany mentioned, I'm the Managing Director at Ventec Life Systems, and we are a company uh, that has made Voxin, which is the first and only integrated multifunction device to combine multiple pieces of equipment uh, for respiratory care into a single device. Um, we do all of our design, development, manufacturing just outside of Seattle, Washington, in a town called Bothell, Washington. Uh, the team has some of the best engineering minds in the world of respiratory care uh, that have really been working on mechanical ventilation uh, going back uh, literally decades. Uh, many of the ventilators that are on the market today have been part of, or this team has been part of bringing uh, together. Our founder, Doug DeVries, uh, actually created the LTV, uh, which stood for laptop ventilator and was the first truly portable ventilator. It was created about 20 years ago and still used today by uh, many people requiring mechanical ventilation all around the world. Uh, however, when Doug created the LTV, he created this portable ventilator was really excited that people could leave the hospital and live a mobile life at home, but the realization set in that most ventilator patients require additional pieces of equipment. And while they had a portable ventilator, some of these other pieces of equipment weren't actually portable, and thus uh, they were not able to live a really truly mobile life. And so uh, Doug decided to 
bring together some of the best minds in the space and say, how can we think about this differently? How can we create integration uh, in these devices? Um, so again, 18 plus devices that this team's been a part of uh, bringing to market. This is just a snapshot of some of our team doing the uh, Ice Bucket Challenge uh, just a couple months ago on the fifth year anniversary of the Ice Bucket Challenge. Uh, we took advantage of a rare sunny day in Seattle to um, uh, highlight our support for um, the ALS community. So quick background on Doug, uh, our founder. Um, we all have a personal connection to uh, somebody using a ventilator in some way, and uh, the ALS community is particularly um, a community that we particularly relate to because of Doug's story. So uh, I mentioned Doug created the LTV, uh, first truly portable ventilator, but uh, didn't really allow for folks on a ventilator to be mobile because of all of the equipment. Uh, couple that with Doug's uh, father, who was diagnosed with ALS, and as we know, 90% of uh, people living with ALS elect not to use mechanical ventilation. Um, Doug's father was one of those people, as you might imagine, for Doug, who spent his entire life uh, literally bringing uh, more than a dozen ventilators to market that had a huge impact on him and really had him questioning why is that decision, uh, why was that decision made by his father, and what can he do to enhance technology such that people don't have to make that same choice that his father made. Um, and that is what really kind of led to the development of Voxin and the integration of all of these devices together. Uh, we're very excited to be corporate partners with the ALS Association and working uh, really closely with a lot of the chapters throughout the country to uh, not only inform people about Voxin, but also to create a um, better educational resource related to respiratory care and what that means particularly for people diagnosed with ALS and what the progression looks like and what the options are uh, related to respiratory care for both uh, the people living with ALS as well as their caregivers. And so beyond just creating technology, we really um, are focused on and our commitment with the National Association is to create educational materials and resources to help people be informed throughout that process. So what is Voxin? Voxin, as the name implies, it's an acronym for Ventilation, Oxygen, Cough, Suction, and Nebulizer. Oftentimes, folks who are using mechanical ventilation, you might recognize the devices here on the screen, are often needing two, three, four, or up to five different devices uh, to help keep their respiratory system uh, working. Obviously, uh, those five devices, uh, they weigh a lot. They all have different operating systems. They all have different power cords and batteries and uh, accessories that are connecting to the patient. And it really in, um, uh, hampers your ability to be mobile and really uh, live any sort of quality of life. So uh, when Doug was looking at this, he said, how do we take these five devices and combine them into a single device? And uh, before he even did that, he said, well, let's go talk to patients and caregivers and figure out what are their pain points and how can we if we're designing something from the ground up, how can we make it better? And so we learned three main things about uh, folks who are using ventilators today. Uh, first of all, it's very complex and time consuming. So uh, it's already complex and time consuming to be a caregiver for a person living with ALS. When you add mechanical ventilation and all of the devices that come with it, uh, that adds to the complexity and it increases the opportunity for risks or for mistakes. And ultimately, that creates a lot of anxiety for both the patient as well as the caregiver. Uh, each of the devices requires a different type of training. Uh, that training adds up. Um, and all of those devices require different maintenance. It also really limits your portability. And ultimately, when you're juggling five different devices and all of the accessories, uh, you end up with a shopping cart or a red wagon full of equipment any time you try to go anywhere, whether that's just for a doctor's office or if you're trying to maintain a normal life and see friends and go out to activities, uh, that's really difficult when you're juggling all of this equipment. And then it's very difficult to switch between therapies. So if you think about cough assist, which we'll talk about, we know cough assist is really effective at clearing secretions and keeping the airways free and clear of infection. However, if it requires a different device and it requires you to disconnect from your life support device, that creates a lot of anxiety, and what often happens is that we just don't do those other therapies. 
so switching between the different therapies because they're separate devices uh, created a big challenge as well for uh, ventilator patients using traditional technology today. So from this, these conversations with patients and caregivers, um, the idea for Voxin was created. So literally combining these five pieces of equipment and combining them into a single device uh, that's the size of a large toaster that weighs 18 pounds with one single operating system. And so that's what Voxin is. It's literally five therapies in one single device. And so who does Voxin work for? It really is hospital to home. We'll talk about the critical care ventilator on board uh, in Voxin that really allows it to work in the hospital, work in long-term care facilities, in transport situations, and obviously in the home. It works for both pediatric and adult patients, so five kilograms and above. Um, it's completely customizable. So yes, it has all five therapies, but you can actually enable those therapies as you need them so it will grow with the patient's needs. Um, and it was FDA cleared in April of 2017, so it's been on the market for quite some time now, and many patients both in the U.S. as well as cleared in Japan uh, have been using Voxin across a variety of those care environments. So what exactly is Voxin? First and foremost, Voxin is a critical care ventilator. Um, it does both invasive, non-invasive, and mouthpiece ventilation across a comprehensive set of modes and settings. So all of the modes and settings you're used to using today, if you're using any sort of mechanical ventilation, um, Voxin is going to be able to do uh, all of those modes and settings, again, across both invasive, non-invasive, and mouthpiece ventilation. It also has on board a six liter per minute oxygen concentrator. Uh, this is the only system in the world to combine ventilation and oxygen into one single breath for the patient, delivering that pure oxygen on the front end of the breath. So very efficient and effective use of the oxygen and delivery of the oxygen that uh, Voxin is making. Cough assist at the touch of a button, so touch button cough literally without having to change circuits or switch devices. You can go from ventilation to cough and right back to ventilation, just like somebody who is breathing on their own not requiring mechanical ventilation can seamlessly switch between the two. Uh, you can now do that with Voxin. Hospital grade suction that's with you at all times. So uh, if you've ever used a portable suction system, you know that they can often be very noisy and not highly effective. Uh, in wall hospital suction is gonna give you that consistent high flow and Voxin is gonna give you that consistent high flow suction with you at all times. And then a high performance nebulizer that's gonna be a lot more comfortable for the patient uh, because the ventilator is compensating for the additional flow coming from the nebulizer. And I'll talk about each of those therapies in detail real quick to give you an idea of what's inside Voxin. Uh, truly, Voxin is going to be as good or better on all five of those therapies than the traditional standalone devices uh, that are available today or that you may be using today. So first and foremost, that critical care ventilator. Ultimately, Voxin is a class two critical care life support ventilator. Uh, when we say critical care, what does that mean? It means it meets a higher standard, and it's actually an international standard uh, for safety and accuracy. So certainly every portable ventilator has to be safe and accurate within a certain spec. The spec for Voxin is actually much tighter, and that means that in temperature fluctuations or shock and vibe situations, if you think about a ventilator that's in an air-conditioned room and then it goes out into the heat uh, of the summer or it's on the back of a wheelchair and uh, the person is going through the, the cracks on the sidewalk and it's got that shock and vibe. Um, ventilators, are, other portable ventilators are going to kind of struggle to maintain that safe and accurate window and Voxin is going to maintain that very comfortable ventilation for the patient. The patient actually feels those adjustments during those shock and vibe and temperature fluctuation situations. Voxin is going to maintain that safe and accurate ventilation across all of those different environments. Again, it has a comprehensive set of modes and settings. It's going to work for both invasive patients, so somebody who has a trach, and non-invasive uh, patients, somebody who might have uh, a full mask or uh, nasal cannula, as well as mouthpiece patients. So uh, regardless of how you're using your ventilator today, Voxin is going to be the best of all of those worlds. Uh, traditionally, you've had to choose between an invasive ventilator or a non-invasive ventilator. Uh, Voxin was designed from the ground up to be the best of both of those. And then it's going to have very powerful leak and circuit compensation. Again, that just means that Voxin is going to be much more comfortable for the patient. It can really dial in the comfortability for what the patient is feeling and the way they're getting the air uh, that they're um, 
we're relying upon the ventilator to provide. That six liter per minute oxygen concentrator, again, in the same device using that same operating system, uh, we have an onboard oxygen concentrator that can create up to 40% FiO2, the equivalent of six liters per minute. Uh, that's going to be pretty much all the oxygen that somebody needs outside of an acute care setting. For many people living with ALS, they might not need oxygen at all, but it is helpful to have a backup source of oxygen. Uh, Voxen also has the ability to do high pressure and low pressure oxygen uh, through the back if you had a wall source in a hospital or a, a tank. Um, and the way Voxen is delivering the oxygen, again, we talk a lot about integrated respiratory care with Voxen. It's not something that's ever been discussed because there's not ever been a device that even combined two of these five therapies together, and Voxen now is taking five devices and putting it in one. And so the benefits of that are not only size, it's not only smaller, and it's not only weight, it weighs less, and it's not only that it has one operating system, it's that the delivery of the care when these devices are integrated together also has benefits as well. And one of those benefits is this oxygen direct system where the oxygen and the ventilation are working together and the front end of every breath is that pure oxygen bolus on the front end getting absorbed deep into the lungs where the patient needs it the most rather than filling up the dead space in the throat and mouth, losing the oxygen uh, in the dead space of the circuit or out the leak in the exhalation valve in the circuit. So again, we know exactly how much oxygen we're making because it's one system and exactly how much oxygen we're delivering to the patient because again, it's one system and we're doing it on the front end of every inspiratory breath. Moving on to cough, cough is a really big idea. I'm gonna to touch on it here and we're gonna um, dive into it a little bit deeper as well. Uh, you and I, um, or you know, folks who are not dependent upon a mechanical ventilator to breathe for them, uh, when we get sick, we have secretions and what do we do? We cough. It's a natural and effective way of removing those secretions, bringing them up out of the airway uh, keeping that airway free and clear of infection, which is the name of the game for anyone who's on a mechanical ventilator. You want to keep those airways clean and free of infection. Um, however, today with cough assist, you have your ventilator, and cough assist is a separate device with a separate circuit, a separate operating system, separate battery power. And the process is that the patient has to disconnect from the ventilator. That creates a lot of anxiety if you're depending upon that ventilator to breathe for you. You then have to connect to this other device, do your cough assist, which is a big flow of air in, a big flow of air out to bring those secretions up and out. Then you have to do some sort of suction likely, and hopefully somebody remembers to reconnect you back to your ventilator. That process can take at least one caregiver, if not two caregivers. That can take 15 to 30 minutes to do one cough cycle, and arguably you're supposed to be doing multiple cough cycles a day. And what often happens is that if folks even have a mechanical cough assist available to them, they're often not using it very frequently. It gets left behind if they go out of the house or because of the noise and the time. Uh, you know, patients might not ask for their caregiver to do it as frequently as they may need to. Um, and while we know it is a really good and effective way of clearing those secretions, we often decide uh, not to do it. With Voxen, again, it's that same circuit that you use for ventilation, the same circuit that you use for uh, oxygen. You can now use for cough assist as well, literally at the touch of a button. So it's hard to see on this screen, but we have three presets in every one of our therapies. You can set those up however you want. In this case, we have it set up for a low, medium, and high cough, and we set up the settings to um, be equivalent to that. I would simply hit start and Voxen would go from ventilating the patient. It would pick a natural point in the patient's breath, again, because it's one system and it's breathing for the patient, as well as then providing the cough so it knows exactly when the comfortable point in the breath is to provide that cough. It then would do the cough. Maybe you do three cough cycles, so an insufflation, exufflation, repeat that three times, bring those secretions up and out of the airway, and then go right back to ventilation. So uninterrupted ventilation, literally for the caregiver, all they had to do was hit one button, and for the patient, the person using Voxin, all they had to do was sit there and continue to breathe and then go to a cough and go right back to breathing. So much more comfortable, much more convenient for both the patient and the caregiver. Moving on to suction. Uh, again, if you've ever used portable suction, you know they're very noisy. It's one piston banging back and forth, making a lot of noise, trying to remove those secretions, uh, but not always doing a great job. Contrast that with the situation in a hospital, you get very high power, consistent high flows from your in-wall 
hospital system uh, that's going to be much quieter, Boxing is going to be much the same. So it's going to be significantly quieter than the portable suction that you're used to using today. And it's going to provide those consistent high flows that are going to make secretion removal a much uh, easier process. Um, we also have the travel suction canister, which you see on the side there. Uh, you can still see if it's full, but you're not seeing all of the colors. It's slightly tinted, so you don't see all the colors of the secretions. But it gives you that suction with you, with your ventilator, at all times. So, Again, when you leave the house and you're going to a doctor's appointment, going to see friends, you don't have to make the decision, you know, am I going to pick this piece of equipment or leave that piece of equipment at home? You have it with you at all times. We like to say everyday mobility because you literally grab boxing and you can walk out the house. And then finally, the fifth therapy on boxing is a high-performance nebulizer. Uh, so for those people living with ALS who do need to do some sort of aerolized uh, medication treatment with a nebulizer, we have an onboard nebulizer with Moxin. Um, right now, this is, uh, you know, the traditional method is that you have your ventilator and you have another piece of equipment, your nebulizer. You connect that nebulizer in line with the patient circuit and it's adding additional flow to the patient. It's very uncomfortable throughout the entire nebulizer treatment for the patient because they're getting not only their ventilation breath, but all of the additional air flowing from the nebulizer. Um, but oftentimes, the ventilator is alarming the entire time. It's getting high pressure alarms. Because, again, it's two separate systems, and the two can't sync for each other because they're completely separate systems. We talked about the benefits of integration. When you have one device, the ventilator can compensate for the additional flow coming from the nebulizer and make that a much more comfortable experience for the patient as they're receiving that nebulizer treatment. You can also set an auto timer, and so at the end of, say, 10 or 15 minutes, you can have that nebulizer automatically turn off and ventilation continues to resume in the background. So it doesn't require the caregiver to come back and hit stop on the nebulizer treatment. It will automatically shut down at the end of that time duration. So those are, that's a quick overview of the five different therapies of Voxin. Uh, it's really difficult to, uh, without having a Voxin and being able to show you a live demonstration of it. We'll talk a little bit about the end, about how you can uh, get in touch with somebody on the Ventec team who's local to you and perhaps get a demonstration of Oxen or try Oxen yourself. Um, we also have monitors and therapy tracker on Boxen. So another benefit is not just that you have all five therapies in one, but you now have the ability to track across the entire respiratory history of your patient what's going on uh, with the patient. When did they use cough assist? When did they do, use nebulizer? All of that information is tracked and stored in Boxen. You can report that and share that with your DME. You can share that with your doctor. It really helps your doctor to get a better understanding of your um, current uh, respiratory history, uh, how you're being compliant, and better understand, are you doing more cough and more suction? Does that mean that you're moving towards an infection and maybe we need to treat that before it becomes an exacerbation and a readmittance to the hospital? So it just gives a lot more data and information than you currently get with the five separate devices, many of which are not tracking any of this information at all. Coming back a little bit to cough therapy. So we talked about the benefits of integration and combining these different therapies together and what that means, not just in the feature set of Voxin being smaller and more energy efficient and uh, less things to carry around, but the actual benefits of the delivery of care. So touch button cough, you know, integrating these two things is really a big idea that uh, we're quite excited about and for the patients who've been using Boxin, we've seen a lot of great benefits. We talked a little bit about the reduced anxiety. So if you think about cough today and having to disconnect from your ventilator in order to then connect to another device to do cough assist, uh, that can create a lot of anxiety. And oftentimes a lot of patients or a lot of people living with ALS who could benefit from cough therapy because of the anxiety of disconnecting from their ventilator choose not to use cough therapy at all and would rather just use deep suction to remove those secretions. Uh, Voxin, the integration thereof, reduces that anxiety because you no longer have to disconnect from your ventilator. It also saves a lot of time. Literally, you can do a cough treatment in less than 10 seconds. Contrast that with 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes to do uh, cough juggling the other devices. It saves a lot of time and enables you to do it uh, on a much more frequent basis. It also reduces the risk of infection. So we know uh, anyone who's using a mechanical ventilation, ventilator, uh, infection is always a big risk and something that you're trying to mitigate at every step of the way. Uh, every time you disconnect the circuit and you open that airway, uh, whether that's a mask or whether that's a connection at the trach, 
Uh, you're exposing that airway uh, to the air and increasing the risk of infection. By not having to disconnect that circuit, you're um, reducing the risk of infection. It also increases compliance. So if the doctor has told you, hey, you should be doing cough therapy four or five times a day or two or three times a day, because you have that on board with you at all times at the touch of a button and it takes less time to do, you're more likely, either you as the caregiver or you as the person living with ALS, you're more likely to be compliant with, those, with the doctor's orders. You can also use humidity with cough. So for those of you who may be uh, using heated humidification either during the day or at night, you can remain connected to that humidifier and actually get a humidified cough with our humidifier bypass, uh, all while remaining connected to your ventilator. So if you think about what that looks like today, you have heated humidification and you're getting humidified air from your ventilator, and then you disconnect from your ventilator, you go to your cough assist, and you're getting a cold, dry uh, flow of air in and out for your cough. And obviously that is not only uncomfortable, but can also provide uh, some uh, uh, some clinically negative uh, outcomes as well. So now having everything combined into one and being able to provide a humidified cough, again, without having to break the circuit, uh, not only is more comfortable, uh, but also helps to reduce the risk of infection. Um, you can maintain your oxygen saturation. So if you are using oxygen, you can continue to use oxygen while you're doing cough. And then ultimately you have uninterrupted ventilation. So you literally go from ventilation to cough and right back to ventilation with the touch of a button uh, without any sort of interruption between those two therapies. So in summary, Voxin is simple, mobile, and care-changing. The idea of one, you have one device to learn, one device to clean, one alarm to silence, one device to transport, one device to charge, one power supply to carry, one circuit to use, one touch to operate, one device to monitor. It really streamlines care for folks who are using mechanical ventilation. So when you go back to the story of Doug and his father and the decision process that goes into a person living with ALS coming to the point in the disease progression where they need to choose whether or not they want to use mechanical ventilation, um, streamlining this care and being able to provide it, again, not just smaller, but also getting the benefits of integrated care. Um, we're hopeful and we've seen with a lot of folks that um, uh, they choose uh, this option rather than the traditional devices that have been out there. So some of the care benefits, we've talked about a lot of these increased uh, mobility for not only the user but also the caregiver, uh, reduced noise. Uh, that really matters a lot. We actually, in, uh, for many of these therapies, uh, we often see when folks are using Voxin for the first time, they forget to turn off suction or forget to turn off some of the other therapies because they're so much quieter than they're used to using and those auditory cues to remember to turn it off are no longer there. Um, it's much easier to use operating systems. So if you think about all your loved ones, um, all the caregivers, uh, they now can spend less time learning all of these devices and managing these devices and more time relating with their loved one and focused on the person and not the machine. Um, really provides user empowerment. We actually have uh, folks who uh, still have the ability to hit the, the cough screen on Voxin and be able to provide cough therapy for themselves without needing a caregiver to get the other machine and disconnect the circuit and reconnect them. And so that adds a lot of empowerment, kind of uh, allows uh, people living with ALS to regain some of that um, personal independence. Much more comfortable for the patient. You can really dial in the ventilation settings. Again, you don't have the anxiety of disconnecting for cough. All of it is connected with one circuit, uh, reduced risk of infection, which we've already talked about, and then increased user compliance. So using all of these therapies more frequently, again, all of that helps to mitigate any sort of infection and reduce any exacerbations that ultimately will end up in another trip back to the doctor's office or, um, unfortunately, uh, to the hospital. So reimbursement for Voxin, what does that look like? Um, this is also very exciting as well. So not only do we have five therapies in one device, we now have multiple billing codes in one billing code as well. So uh, for many of you, you won't necessarily need to worry about this. This is something that would be done by your DME provider, whoever's providing the equipment uh, that you use in the home. But there is now one billing code. This went into effect January 1st of this year, E0467 for a multifunction ventilator, 
Uh, Voxin is the only device that qualifies as a multifunction ventilator and can be billed against E0467. Uh, patients are eligible for a multifunction ventilator if they have a script from a doctor for a ventilator plus one of the additional four other therapies. So for instance, anyone who's using Voxin or using a ventilator invasively in the home, they're required then to have a portable suction pump as well. So they would have a script from their doctor for ventilation and suction. They would then qualify because they have a script for vent plus one other therapy. They would then qualify for Voxin. They could then use the other therapies provided they have a script for those other therapies. But qualification for Voxin only requires ventilation plus one of the four other therapies. It's really important to know right now the way the uh, rule has been interpreted is that any patients who are currently using any of this additional, uh, these traditional devices and have been using it past the period of ownership, so what does that look like? That means for patients who've been using oxygen for longer than 36 months or uh, people who've been using cough, suction, or nebulizer for longer than 13 months, Past those periods of time, you are then capped out. You then technically own those pieces of equipment. And under the interpretation of E0467 today, you would be precluded from getting Voxin because CMS sees that as redundant payment for equipment that you already have. So very important if you're using that equipment to make the switch before you cap out or become an owner of those pieces of equipment or early in your diagnosis, speak with your doctor about um, getting boxed in early rather than using some of this traditional equipment which might preclude you from ultimately being able to get boxed in uh, when you need all five of those therapies. Uh, reimbursement for E0467 is slightly higher. Uh, so for your DME company, it provides them uh, some additional reimbursement uh, to cover the expenses of the equipment and care. Um, and you no longer have to worry about the different ownership schedules. So if you think about it today, if you think about your cough assist, and if you've been using cough assist longer than 13 months, you then own that piece of equipment. And if something happens to that cough assist in month 14 or 15 or beyond, you're then on the hook to fix that equipment. Your DME is no longer getting payment, uh, rental payment from uh, the payer for that equipment. Uh, that is your equipment that you then own. Uh, but then you're on the hook for all of the maintenance and everything else related to it. Now, with Voxin, the DME will own that equipment in perpetuity. It will constantly be maintained under the uh, agreement from your DME provider, and that takes a lot of the burden off of the patients and caregivers from having to manage a bunch of different pieces of equipment. So happy to answer any of your direct questions about E0467 and who is eligible. We have a whole team who works with uh, your DME and with your provider and with your payer to work through payment for E0467. It is a completely new way of reimbursing for DME, uh, regardless of uh, respiratory care. Uh, it's new because Voxin is really uh, the only example of integrated DME uh, that exists. So CMS, after many, many conversations, uh, created this new code, and we're happy to work with any of your DME providers as well as your prescribing physicians to work through the eligibility requirements uh, necessary uh, to get you on Voxin uh, related and billable for E0467. So often one of the first questions we get is, great, you combine all these devices in one that's fantastic, but I use all of these devices and uh, every month something's breaking. My suction pump's breaking, my nebulizer's breaking, my oxygen's breaking, and now you put it all in one and that means that my ventilator is gonna break every month. Um, totally understand where folks are coming from with that line of questioning. Uh, but the reality with Voxin is that in order to get everything uh, smaller and in one box, we had to completely redesign everything. So we didn't create a new therapy, but we re-engineered all of the parts to be smaller, more energy efficient, and to make them work together. And in order to do that, we had to completely redesign many of these parts. And so the parts and components, that single piston that's banging back and forth on your portable suction pumps today is not what's driving the, the suction in Voxin. It's actually a highly over-engineered three-piston compressor that gives you a much more consistent flow, runs at a much slower speed, generates less heat, less wear and tear. All of the components in Voxin are designed and tested to 30,000 hours of continuous life. So that's the equivalent of running your nebulizer and your suction pump for nearly four years continuously. 
Um, and then box in his service on 10,000 hours or every two years. So uh, standard to what your ventilator uh, preventative maintenance schedule is today, but you're not only going to get your ventilator checked out, you're going to get all five therapies looked at as well. So um, it's really kind of an apples to oranges comparison of your traditional devices today versus the technology in Boxin. Everything has been over-engineered uh, to last uh, well beyond um, you know, the, the schedule that you're used to using or the equipment you're used to using today. And then ultimately everything is geared in Boxin to keep the ventilation going. So even if something were to go out in Boxin, let's say your suction went out, um, Voxin is always going to continue to ventilate because at the end of the day, it's still a life support ventilator. So with that, I'm going to turn the call over uh, to a few of our uh, very special guests. So we have Pat Quinn Sr., um, obviously related to Pat Quinn, uh, co-founder of the Ice Bucket Challenge. He's been using Voxin now uh, for quite some time. Unfortunately, Pat was unable to be with us, but Pat Sr. is here uh, to not speak on behalf of Pat Quinn, but to provide his perspective as a caregiver, um, you know, working with his son about how Boxing has impacted their day-to-day -day life, um, some of his thoughts about um, you know, what he likes about Boxing, perhaps even uh, what he would like to see change with Boxing. We're constantly getting feedback, and I think the one thing that uh, we want to stress is that we love feedback from patients and caregivers, and our team is not done innovating with Boxing. We're very excited about where it is today, but there are more things that we can do with Boxin. There are more features we can add to Boxin. Um, and there are more uh, innovations that we can have within respiratory care, looking at the other devices that um, somebody using a mechanical ventilator needs that isn't integrated in Boxin, uh, other things that we can add. So with that, I'll turn the call over to uh, Pat Quinn Sr. to say a few words. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Pat Quinn. I'm Pat Quinn's dad. Um, I was a little leery when uh, Boxing was first introduced to us because I, in my mind I said, how can they get five therapies in this one unit? However, when they brought it to the home so we could have an in-house demonstration of it, it was more than amazing. Um, we jumped on board right away. Patrick was excited about it. Uh, everything that Chris has said prior is 100% uh, true. The efficiency, the ease of use. Um, the noise reduction in the, in the suctioning, it's just, it, it, it's crazy to even think that they they could have come up with something um, this good. On a personal note, I am my son's full-time caretaker, and as many times when we want to go out somewhere that he defers not to because we have to get so many things ready to take out. I believe Chris was in the house one day and he saw me loading up a shopping cart full of stuff to bring down to the car and a checklist to make sure I had everything possible that he might need. And every now and then you forget something. Um, I remember we were out at a game about three weeks ago. No, before the, the box was in, but yeah, maybe six weeks ago. And I forgot the mask for the cough assist. What good is that if you don't have it? So we had to leave where we were and go back home. With the boxing, all we have to do is hook it onto the back of his wheelchair out the door. So it makes him more apt to want to go out instead of deferring to go out, and the ease of getting him out is just so much of a mind ease on my part. I can just, you know, put the boxing on the back of the chair, put Pat in the chair, and we're out the door. It's one of the easiest things that, um, that I use. Uh, there's no worrying about switching uh, components. There's no getting another machine. There's no getting another unit. Everything is right there. And for an old guy like myself that isn't that techno savvy, pressing the button, boom, from one therapy to the next, it's one of the easiest things that I've ever come across. Awesome. Thank you, Pat. And uh, and I had, the, as a quick aside, we had the pleasure of uh, meeting Pat and his son uh, just a couple of weeks ago after many conversations. Uh, Pat Quinn actually uh, spoke to our team in Bothell, did a, a live um, uh, video chat with our team, and just an incredible inspiration in what he's been able to do uh, to bring a voice to the uh, people living with ALS as well as to the caregivers and uh, truly is the inspiration that keeps our team working every day and every night to make boxing better and to share boxing with more and more people. And uh, really appreciate uh, those comments, uh, Pat. And um, now we'll turn it over to uh, Dr. Libby, who I had the privilege of being introduced to just a couple of months ago. 
Uh, Dr. Libby has uh, been working with people in ALS for many, many years, uh, founding uh, board member of the Oregon chapter, uh, ALS chapter, and uh, works still at one of the uh, best ALS clinics in the country, uh, just happens to be a little bit south of us in Portland, Oregon. Um, Dr. Libby has been working with a few patients now who've been using Boxin and want to turn it over to him for his thoughts from a physician perspective about what the benefits of combining these therapies actually looks like and uh, some of the reaction that he's seen from uh, the patients that he's been working with. Sure. Thank you very much, Chris. And, and thank you, Pat, for sharing uh, your son's experience. Um, and that's been the experience of the uh, patients I've placed on to Voxin uh, recently. Um, I'm a pulmonologist, so I'm a lung doctor, and I've uh, dealt with ventilators going back to the 1970s, actually. And I certainly used the LTV that, that uh, Doug DeVries uh, uh, designed years ago. And it was, it was a good step in the right direction. But this is a definite uh, game changer. I, I liken it to, to, if you look back to your uh, cell phone uh, in 1999, 20 years ago, or 2003, or whatever, the cell phone was a phone, and that's all it did. And you had a TV, and it was a TV, and that's all it did. And you probably had a computer, and uh, you, you had to go to the three different things. And now we have these smartphones that do them all. And that's sort of what the, uh, the Voxin is, and it liberates patients. So that's the first thing that excited me, the, the liberation of patients. Uh, I've got a patient who loves uh, loves to go to concerts. And uh, uh, in the last uh, 6 to 12 months, he's gone from just using an ABAPS at night to now need, needing it during the day and uh, needing suction and, uh, and the cough assist. Uh, so he was beginning to think that he wouldn't be able to go to the concerts uh, that he went to because of all this equipment he'd have to take with him. Uh, but the Voxen is going to let him uh, evolve so he can go to those things, and he's excited about it. So, so, uh, so that, that's the, the first thing you hear. The, the next thing you hear from patients um, uh, and caregivers, in, in my experience, is they love the suction machine. It's so quiet compared to that noisy thing. And many ALS patients need to be suctioned in the mouth usually uh, uh, because they make so much saliva that they can't swallow every 10, 15, 20 minutes. Um, and, and we're making this terrible noise. Um, and now the noise is very, very quiet. So that's, that's a, a, a great step in the uh, right direction. But I do have to tell you that um, I'm always a bit of a skeptic with uh, new, new equipment and, uh, and new drugs, and I'm a little conservative in that, uh, that way. Uh, so I was very concerned about the engineering and the fact that if one thing goes out, you lose your whole thing. But I've been very impressed with the engineering on this thing. I'm not an engineer. Uh, but I think it's engineered to much higher quality and, and standards than anything we've had before. Nothing's wrong with the Trilogy and the AVAPS machines, but this is just a step above that. Uh, so that's fantastic. And then the final thing is a physician. We like to monitor what's going on with our patients. And, and you all know that we get readouts on your use of your AVAPS machine or your Trilogy ventilator, and we can see how many hours you're doing and whether it's working, the quality of the breath and all that. But now we can do it with a cough assist and the suction machine and, and the nebulizer if we want to do that. But it's a cough assist that I think is, is underused. And uh, between the engineering and our ability to monitor it, I think there'll be much more use of the, uh, of the suction machine and much more effective uh, 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 removal of secretions, which means less pneumonias, less complications. So uh, this is really a step forward, and I'm, uh, I've got a few patients on it. I'm looking to forward to many more uh, benefiting from it. Awesome. Thank you, Dr. Libby. Appreciate uh, those comments. I know we are coming up on the, uh, towards the end of the webinar here, so just want to um, get to the last slide here. Uh, encourage you to email info at ventechlife.com. We'll try to answer some of the questions that have come through the chat. Uh, we have a ton of information on our website. We actually have a special uh, page specific to the ALS community, so ventechlife.com forward slash ALS. Uh, you'll see some testimonials from some other folks who are using Boxin. Um, you can uh, learn more about our corporate partnership with the National ALS Association as well as your ALS guide and some of the other uh, resources that we are developing specific to respiratory care for the ALS community. Um, we've got online video training, sample prescriptions, 
Uh, again, if you get in touch with us, we're happy to help you speak with your doctor and your DME provider about getting access to Voxin. We can also help you through the reimbursement uh, questions that you might have uh, for Voxin. A couple quick questions, just seeing what's coming through the chat. Uh, yes, you can enable or disable any of the therapies, and you can actually use them in combination or not. So if you're doing cough, you don't have to do oxygen with cough. You can absolutely just do cough. Or you can actually turn on cough plus suction. So as you're doing cough, you can have suction running in the background. So if you need to do any sort of oral suction or uh, if you're working uh, with someone who is on a trach, you can do the suction as cough is happening. So you're really kind of doing three therapies all at one time with the touch of a button. Um, for those questions about reimbursement, uh, every one of those situations is a little bit unique, and so we're more than happy to walk through those with you. Um, to answer those questions, uh, just email info at ventechlife.com. Uh, we'll get back to you same day and point you in the right direction or directly answer your question uh, if we can. Um, I do see some questions about getting Voxin outside of the U.S. Right now it is available in Japan and in the U.S., uh, we are working, and we have a lot of great interest in Voxin uh, throughout Europe and the Middle East, and uh, that is on our radar, but probably not something that uh, will happen until uh, middle to end of next year uh, at the earliest. But uh, feel free to email us and let us know. That way we can stay in touch with you uh, as we come to your country. Any other questions, I, I'm going to stay on here for a little bit longer if folks want to ask the question in the chat, or Brittany, I don't know if we have time where we can open up the lines for folks to ask questions uh, on the phone as well. Hi, Chris. Uh, yeah, let me try to um, allow people to dial in, so give me one second. Excellent. For those of you who can't stay, really appreciate you taking the time The conference to has been unmuted. Join us on the webinar, and uh, it will be... Got a little bit of feedback here. Uh, any yeah. questions for folks on the phone? Yeah, you have another one that came already earlier. Hi, I have a question. My name is um, Ely Menchin, and I'm calling from North Carolina. Is there, there. Um, what I heard was that there was not a, like a caring case like the Trilogy has, but um, Pat had mentioned that it's easy to put on the chair. So what, how is it transported? Yep, um, and I see that was another question in the chat as well. So we do have a, uh, something called the Freedom Carrier, which is kind of a basket that hooks onto the back of a wheelchair that will work on some wheelchairs. Obviously, every wheelchair is completely different, and so right. each configuration um, will need to be done individually. But the Freedom Carrier is one option. Um, I'm not sure if it is covered by insurance. Uh, there are some codes that can be billed for um, some sort of wheelchair mount. Um, we also are developing a bag, if you will, that has several different attachment points, uh, and that will be available here in the coming weeks uh, that will enable you to attach Voxin to the back of your chair if you have a mounting bracket or uh, whatever kind of configuration you have on the back of your chair. It will give you a lot of flexibility, actually well beyond just the carrying case that you're used to using uh, with the Trilogy today. Thank you. Yep. Other questions? Do you want to listen to the question? Okay, you want me to get your one? All right, I'm going to hang up. <laughs> Anyone else on the phone with questions? Or feel free if you're still on the chat and you want to submit your question there. Is it a single limb only or double limb circuit? So it is a single limb circuit. It's the Ventec 1 circuit, which is actually a much more streamlined circuit. It's going to be uh, lighter, more flexible, higher quality than what you're traditionally used to using with your ventilator circuit. Uh, it can be a lot more comfortable for uh, the patient. Um, and it is a single limb. So whether you're using your passive or your active, it's all combined into a single limb circuit. You have heated wire also? Yep, so there is heated circuit. So we have uh, just your active circuit or your passive circuit, so with leak or without leak, uh, heated or non-heated, and then with oxygen or without oxygen. You can also get heated with oxygen, um, et cetera. So a variety of different circuit configurations depending upon whether or not you're using a mask, a mask with a leak, a trach, 
mouthpiece, et cetera. Okay. But it does not require a proprietary circuit? It does require um, the Ventec 1 circuit. So uh, this circuit is the only circuit that can do multiple therapies with one circuit. Uh, as much as we would like to not be making circuits, uh, much of the uh, integration capability of Voxen is actually tied into the circuit. So you do have to use the Ventec 1 circuit. Again, whether that's an active circuit, a passive circuit, the Ventec 1 circuit with oxygen or with heat, um, but you have to use the Ventec 1 circuit with Voxen. Okay. Generally, you're going to find that circuit to be as much or um, about the same cost of what you're paying today for your circuit. It's going to last generally as long, if not longer, than your traditional circuit today. Okay. Other questions? Looks like we still have a few dozen uh, folks on the phone. Yep. Yeah, <clears throat> my name is Scott. I'm in Salt Lake City. Uh, just a question about the nebulizer. Where does that take place? I mean, is it close to – you mentioned it's a single limb circuit. Yep. Is Correct. There something that so, so you would that take drives? your standard – six liter nebulizer cup. Let me just, if you're still on here. So you take that, that would have a T joint and that would go at the end of the circuit proximal to the patient. Perfect. Okay. So you connect that in line with the circuit at the end proximal to the patient. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Can you use the exhalation valve or the exhalation port on the mask? So yes, if you have a mask with a leak or with some sort of valve on your mask, you could then use a Ventec 1 uh, valveless circuit, uh, which would then use the leak or the exhalation valve on your mask. So you could still use whatever mask uh, you're currently using. Uh, you would just select the appropriate Ventec 1 circuit to go with that mask. So whatever your actual interface is, trach, mask, et cetera, you could still use that and you would just select the appropriate Ventec 1 circuit to go with that interface. Where does the uh, suction canister go? Yep, so if you're still on the webinar here, I'll go over to suction. So that suction canister is actually attached on the side of Voxen. Uh, so you can take that on or off. Um, you could you know, rinse and reuse it. You could throw it out and put another one on there. Uh, but that's going to be with you at all times. We also do have an adapter. Uh, so if you don't want to use that canister, you want to use your traditional 12 or 1500 milliliter uh, canisters that you probably already have many of. Uh, you can use the little adapter and it would connect to the top of that canister. Okay. But that travel suction canister is going to give you suction on the go at all times connected to Voxen. So you can literally lift Voxen up by the handle, put it on the back of the chair, walk out of the house, and know that you've always got the ability to do suction with, with you. All good questions. Any other questions from folks on the phone? Is there a filter between the system and the suction canister? Yes. So there is a filter in that suction canister um, and also in the adapter if you were to use an external suction canister, um, a hydrophobic filter so that uh, if that canister fills up or if something tips, it prevents anything from getting back into Voxen. Any other questions? Still have a couple dozen folks. Uh, again, highly encourage you to visit ventechlife.com forward slash ALS uh, for more information specific to Voxin and its uh, application and use within the ALS community. Uh, we're really excited to continue to share the stories uh, of people with ALS who are living with Voxin and how it's providing uh, additional mobility and enhancing uh, their life as well as their respiratory care, um, and also excited to provide more educational resources to help in those conversations about respiratory care so that they're happening earlier uh, as folks are diagnosed um, so that they can understand uh, what their options are uh, as uh, the disease progresses. Uh, when using the nebulizer, is the tidal volume affected? Uh, no, it is not. And that's actually the benefit of the integrated care with Voxin is that because it's one system, 
uh, the ventilator is actually going to compensate for the additional flow coming from the nebulizer. Uh, so the volume, the pressure is going to remain the same, uh, and that's a lot more comfortable for the patient. So if you think about it today, two separate devices, uh, that nebulizer is adding additional flow and pressure to the patient, and that creates a lot of uncomfortability, creates a lot of nuisance-type pressure alarms, and none of that is the case with boxing because of that integrated system. And sensing the doll that you might be a respiratory therapist, just a hunch. Other questions from anyone else on the phone? The lines are still open. The chat is still open as well. Hi. I'm having some hard time getting some private insurance to cover it, not so much Medicare, but private insurance. What recommendations do you have for that? Um, absolutely. Email info at bentechlife.com. We'll follow up with you directly. A okay. lot of insurance companies, because it's new, um, right. you know, think it's experimental or aren't aware of it. Uh, mm -hmm. And so initially we have actually received a lot of rejections. Uh, we yeah. have never uh, been unsuccessful in an appeal. So oftentimes we just need to go back to the insurer, let them know that there's nothing new in Boxin. It's just a new device, but there are no new therapies. There's nothing experimental. Uh, we've got plenty of the supporting documentation from the FDA, from Medicare, as well as supporting physicians uh, to speak about Boxin. Uh, and we've never been unsuccessful in that appeal. So. I'm more than happy to work with you and also share uh, with your insurer uh, all of the other insurers who are providing coverage for Boxing. Okay, thanks. Yep, thank you. So, Nadal, to your all question right, about yeah. modes, it's a comprehensive set of modes and settings. So, it's going to do pressure control, volume control, AC volume, AC pressure, SIMV. Uh, we can get to all of the modes that you're used to using, AVAPs, PRVC, et cetera. Uh, we actually have a comparable vent modes chart on our website in the resources section uh, to show you all of the different uh, ventilation modes that Boxin can do. Brittany, I think that was you trying to wrap us up. So thank you, everyone, for joining this afternoon. Um, as Brittany mentioned, this will be uh, this is recorded and this will be posted on the ALS website. We'll also add it to ventechlife.com forward slash ALS if you want to share it with others or reference any of the material in here. Please don't hesitate to shoot us an email, reach out. Uh, we're always happy to help answer any questions as well as uh, answer uh, any uh, struggles that you're having getting access to Boxin or provide an in-person demonstration or even a patient evaluation or trial of Boxin. Uh, wherever you may be in the U.S. Brittany? Yeah. yeah, thank you so much, Chris, and thank you all for joining this webinar. We're truly grateful for the partnership we, ha we have with Vent Tech Life, and um, stay tuned. We will be posting this on our website afterwards for viewing and sharing afterwards. Again, thank you so much, and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.